Hey everybody, welcome back to Torment Tides of Numenera. We are back in Circus Spiner. We're actually just uh, finishing up some... Trying to figure out uh, what the next thing we're going to do here is. Our quests are... Our main quest is to go and locate uh, a former cast off named Makina, who's also an assassin. Um, as part of that, Mapper has asked me to, um, let's see, is it part of this? Discover the location of the Changing God's Sanctuary for Mapper, which is uh, Sage's Cliffs. Uh, let's see. Hidden sanctuary that was established long ago by the changing god. Apparently, um, all he knows is that it's underground somewhere very close to the Steech's lair. Um, yeah, so I need to do that. Uh, which, now that I think about it, we can probably talk to the Steech about getting, um, about getting uh, access to because there was a Steecha down in the underbelly that we helped. But also, I have absolutely no idea where this book is. Uh, we need to talk to Makina for this. Uh, Foreman's... This is... I might come back to this one, but it looks like I need to talk to Order of Truth for that. And I need to find this house in Cliff's Edge. Uh, something else I realized is that I hadn't finished talking to everybody out here, so before we go on, I'm gonna make sure that we haven't missed any right. quests. Uh, like, we noticed that there were some slavers over here that I tried to avoid, but let's make sure there's nothing going on here. As you approach the wild-haired woman's eyes, you, oh, the wild hair woman eyes you specul speculatively and whispers something to her companions. They burst out laughing and a slight smirk plays about her lips. A breathing mask dangles from a cord around her neck and you can see where it has cut permanent grooves into her face. She ruffles her hair, messing it further, and sings out, Come to buy a slave, cast off? If you've come to me, you must want something of the sort. How do you know my cast off? Tattoo, I've had dealings with your kind before. I know about you. So, cast off, I have information you might want. Of course, it comes with a price. What information? You think you'll get it for me that easily? I don't think so. I know your type. You cast offs, not a one of you can be trusted. I give you this information, you're gone before I can collect my price. So, you'll forgive me if I decline to say outright what secrets I hold. I'll remember that. One of my wards is run off. She's taken a head wound, not my doing, and I've been watching after her. I don't know where she's gone, but I suspect she's headed to Cliff's Edge. Plenty of other urchins clamoring about the place. It should be easy to find it easy to blend in. Sadly, my troop and I are detained here, so we can't go ourselves. She's a scrawny child named of Wren, head wound but covered by dark, curly hair. Has a little necklace around her throat. Babbles about her gods. Go get her for me, and I'll tell you what you want to know. Uh. Is there a few other questions for me first? Uh questions about slavery. It's not so bad, not horrific. Almost no one sells them for parts anymore. Fact is, most of them go down to the bloom, where they can work off their debt to society by opening a mall or two. It's not a forever thing, it's punishment. Uh, you know what? I'm not particularly interested in uh, helping slavers, so uh, it's good to know. She's missing a slave, so if I run into that right. slave, we'll probably help her out. I also noticed I talked to these parents. I never talked to the kid. The child skins to a halt and rubs his forehead with a grimy forearm, leaving arrow tracks of dirt across his ruddy skin. Hey, Shuva, he pants. Never seen you before. Call me Shuva, what does that mean? Huh? Really? You never heard it? Uh, Alligurn, I have, but not since I was young. Kids are saying that again? When Jerem nods quickly, Alligurn glances at you, his smile fading into a customary scowl. It's slang from an older dialect, kid. 
my grandfather used it when he was young. They'd get outsiders coming through their village, dealing tough with the merchants and shoving kids aside as they went about their damned important business. Shuva, get it? Uh, yeah, that's it, all right. Uh, do you like playing on the market? Not always, but it's better than school, hey? And I like Zahofi make... I like watching Zaofi make sculptures, the ones that go sharp and curly. Reminds me of the monster on the other side of Scarrow Hall. Scarrow Hall, what's that? The building? Yeah, Shiva. It's a building at the center of town, a thousand yard hands tall, with a mural on the other side of Zaofi's sculpture, but flat and in purple rock. Don't think you're going to miss it if you're looking for it, hey? Allegarn, yeah, you will. Scarrow Hall was a huge temple at the center of town, like he says. It was turned torn down centuries ago. Kid's either a liar or a carker. Hmm. Uh, tell me about Scarlet Hall again? Hmm. Why are you so dirty? <laughs> I don't know. Paja and Kelinor make me wash twice a day. I guess the dirt likes me, hey? Don't your parents worry about you running around here alone? My parents? You mean Paja and Kelinor? They're watching me until my Mard and Ciro come back for me. What does this mean? Huh? Bard, Zero, my parents. You asked me about them. Paja and Kelinor are taking care of me until they come back. Hmm. Very well. I wonder what's up with that. Jerem has an interesting vocabulary. Where do you learn those words? You know, children, mine's like an open bag, catching every bit of truth that gets thrown their way. Pay him no mind. Why are you out here again? Jerem likes it, so do we. Okay. Yeah, there's something up here. Clears his throat and avoids your gaze. Oh. Okay. So you keep using words I don't recognize. Where did you hear them? I, uh, I'm not allowed to tell adults about that or where I'm from. Don't ask, hey? Okay? Don't worry, I know all sorts of secrets and I never tell anyone. Uh, yeah, let's, let's try to find this one out. Jerem wavers, looking between his adopted parents and the face of his new friend. Finally he gives up. Alright, I guess I can tell you, but you can't spread it around, right? Okay, tell me where you're from. Hey, Shiva, I'm from here. It's just up and changed without me. I grew up in the Downs. My parents lost their spots on the work chain, and we went to sleep hungry more and more. Neither of them can look at me without crying. But everyone in the Downs was starving. It wasn't anything new. People just started using the archway more and more. The Downs. If you weren't in the families in the up, everywhere else was the downs. Inside the wreckage, we'd dig deep, looking for food first, warm second. My neighborhood was inside the curvy spiral. If you've ever seen the paintings of a seashell, it's like that. Tell me about the archway. Big thing, always smells... Always good smells coming out of it, like roasting meat in sunny days. I used to watch it, but I was never sure what it was for, you know? And the parents in the downs never talked about it either. Then one morning I saw Corna, a friend of mine, and her Mard go up. Mard gives her a kiss and sends her through. Corna never came out again. No one did, though? Food? Ha, huh, no. That'd be cruel for Corna's Mard to lose her girl and gain a meal. But no, it was a metal ring. It didn't look to be worth much, but every once in a while you'd hear Corna laughing. Wherever she was, she was happy, right? A handful of days pass and my Mard takes me for a walk, too. She said she'd find me when she saved the money, kissed me, and pushed me through it. Woke up outside the another archway up in Government Square. Paja and Kelinor are waiting for me there. They're not so bad, but I keep hoping my parents will stop by to visit, even if they don't have money yet, right? Uh, I try to laugh a lot so they can hear me, though. Oh. Okay. On it. Well, that's interesting. So it's like uh, he comes from a place where there wasn't a lot of food, All right. but they had a way to what send somebody On it. maybe forward in time to maybe when things are better. Hmm. Okay, so the other thing is I talked to you, the overseer, about these people here. 
this guy being executed. I never actually tried talking to these guys here. We shall live in the bones of a behemoth. Uh, death repress. Okay, so these guys probably aren't gonna let me pass, right? Ah. Man is large and broad shoulder, and his steel armor is painted in the silver and indigo colors of Sage's Cliffs. Seems to be an ordinary soldier or constable of the city. Too ordinary, perhaps. As you scan his face, you see that his features are plain, forgettable, almost generic. Not only that, his eyes are a little too large, his smile too firmly fixed upon his face. Will you let me pass? Regrettably, I cannot. By order of the slave families, I must prevent anyone from approaching the condemned man. You must be new to the city to ask such a thing. Allow me to welcome you to Sage Cliff's visitor. I am a levy. You may rely upon me and others like me for protection and assistance at the discretion of the council and the slave families. What does that mean? Every citizen is required to raise a levy for the protection of the city. In times of war or strife, citizens are sometimes called upon to raise additional levies, but this has not been required since a dread destroyer crossed the northern frontier 34 years ago. They're raised by citizens? Yes, a year of life is taken from a citizen. A lost year is used to create a levy. That is why our lifespans are precisely one year long. When our spans are up, we degrade into our component matter. If you are curious about the process, I have been instructed to direct you to the Order of Truth, where you may observe the machine that is our parent. Hmm. How much time do you have left? I have only existed for 14 days, so by the standard calendar I have 299 remaining, unless I am quick held in the line of duty. Who are the council and slave families? Uh, do they govern the city? Indeed so, each slave family sends one representative, usually the head of the family, to sit on the council. We are required to follow their commands. So you really serve the council, not the people of the city. Yes, that is correct. What's happening here? Execution for treason ordered by the acclamation of the council. The condemned man is guilty of selling state secrets to a foreign power. Uh, like to go up on the platform? Afraid that is not permitted during an execution. If you wish, you may appeal to the official in charge. Uh, tell me what's happening here. That man over there told me he was involved in Riss's crime. Okay. Is that like a lie or a distraction? Because I don't remember anybody telling me that. Um, tell me again what's happening here. Executing a prisoner. What was his crime? Selling state secrets. About the execution. Yeah. That's, uh, let me ask you something else. Eh. Who are you? Uh, I am mean overseer of capital punishment charged by the council with organizing public executions and making sure they run smoothly. Yeah, I think this might just be like a distraction, so I'm not going to do that. It's a plan. But, and then, um, of course, uh, maybe I have talked to everybody else. I know I can pay to take a closer look at this guy. I'm not sure I'm really all that interested. Actually, I don't remember talking to this guy. Pelazar. This thin, fidgeting Aeon priest shoots furtive, sidelong glances at the creature in the nearby cage while humming a nonchalant tune. When he sees that you're watching him, he flinches. Over the course of a few frantic breaths, shock becomes embarrassed anger, and he opens his mouth to shout at you. And he spots Allegorn at your side and sneers. Oh look, you found someone to chase shadows with Allegorn. How much are you paying him to pretend your blather makes sense? He spits at your companion's feet. Allegorn raises his eyebrows at the spatter of wet dirt. It's nice to be famous, not that you'd know, because I sure as hell don't know you. He smirks in your direction. Typical order of truth acolyte here, T treating tasty gossip as evidence. Doesn't matter if something's true, so long as it's interesting. Maybe they should call it the order of trust. Allegorn barks a laugh. Maybe most of them sure as hell aren't tracing the truth anymore. 
turn back to Belazar. The young priest is regarding both of you sourly. But you know the creature over there. What? It's a Nike Theramon. Themeron? A biomechanical creature, an information gatherer, in fact. They're dangerous, though. You can only speak to them at night. During the daylight, they'll attack without provocation. Attacks without thinking, huh? You're practically twins. You're planning something, aren't you? Belazar weighs the intent of your words with narrowed eyes. Are you with the order of truth or just snooping? I'm just curious. I'm not planning anything. I'm enjoying the fresh air. Algorand says, honesty and openness. Hallmarks of the order. If you really want to know what he's up to, you can ask one of the other priests at the order. I'm sure they'd be happy to sell out his secrets. Wow. Go. They really don't like each other. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is we're getting a little low on some of these points. So I'm going to sleep for our, Let's see if I can find a place to sleep here. Uh, 40 shins. We actually have some shins now, so let's pay. Okay, and we heal up all of our points. Wake up, a woman says, and you do. She stands armed folded, watching you with a grim expression. There's been another murder in the underbelly. A little mutant named Crooked Keek. Folsom wants some words with you. If I were you, I'd head down there now. Oh, not Crooked Keek. She seemed reasonably nice. Okay, well, we're definitely going to go do that then. Uh, Let's go. Hmm. I thought we were just going to go and rest and then head to the next area, but uh, apparently that is not a thing right now. Yes, now. Yeah, we helped her fish. Oh no! It's that symbol again. A tiny skinned hand rests palm down at the center of the huge pool of blood. A nearby wall, someone has drawn a bloody circle pierced with jagged symbols. The skinned hand at the center of the pool is small and misshapen. Nothing else remains of the victim. Nothing remains of Crooked Keek. It is immediately clear that the dashes and bleeding pinpricks decorating this circle are not random. This is a symbol drawn with careful intent. Unfortunately, it means nothing to you. Huh. Yeah, she didn't do anything either. I mean, she seemed totally harmless. Let's see. Can we get another fish? We can. Doing it now. Actually, what does that fish do for us? Uh, heals two points of speed. Okay. Good to know. Sure. Hey, Folsom. What the heck happened here? He beckons you with a hard, sharp motion, his jaw set, his teeth ba partly bared. Someone else was murdered in your absence. A woman called Crooked Keek was killed beside the water. I ask that you share any new information you have, and if you do not have any, find any. Or find some. I don't. Do you have any new insights on the killer's motives? I do not. Weedle was a cornerstone of my plan for the city. His death, death pains me and will hurt the city for years to come. But Keek's death has only robbed the underbelly of her smile. I cannot imagine why she was a target. Yeah, I can't either. Yes. Okay, so we need to get on finding Makina. On it. Uh, which means we've got to help Mapper. Um, which means we need to find. Let's see where am I? Oh, I'm on the wrong. I'm ready. Let's think about going to. Yeah, let's just go talk to this guy. Egg friend. Uh, Chakakt whistles. The smell of dust and close air surrounds it. The creature is clearly glad to see you. Steach a deep dig like promise. Rock not is good here there, but Chakekt promise. Steach a move. Human want travel? Um, can you take me someplace under the city? Steach just bows, almost scuffling, scuttling, and the warm smell of cooking rock rises from its back. Friend to Steach it. Yes, no pay you. Free. 
Heard the changing god has a sanctuary underneath the city. Can you take me there? If you move your people deep underground, can you take me to your old lair? Um, oh, that's an interesting option. I might try that later, but for now, I heard the changing god had a sanctuary underneath the city. Can you take me there? Yes, for Stitcha, friend, yes. Can take to Egg Tunnel, then walk to place, yes? Oh, okay. Emerging from the freshly dug tunnel, you find yourself in a small chamber with veins of refined metal glimmering around the grounds and walls, placed beyond egg rooms, hatchling chambers. Its claws work up and down slowly. Future Sticha moved far away, sanctuary on other side of a knot nest. Okay. Uh, see ya, check out. Uh, the cold calculating jack. Let's see. So our... Let's see. Found my way to the Steech's Lair. The entrance to the Changing God Sanctuary is somewhere within. Uh, yeah, so. Um, of course, now I have no way. Let's see. So we can go back here to the underbelly, or we can get ourselves in all kinds of trouble. What is this? Fine. All right. I'm just trying to look at these things. The glowing statue emits a low hum that tugs lightly at your mind, trying to draw your attention. The Stitcha cannot seem to resist it as you All can. Right. Okay, so it's gonna give me descriptions as if the Stitcha are still here. Um, let's see. Go. Okay. Is this going to the buried crossroads? Sure. I'm okay. going. Uh, the device is larger and more pristine than the other statue you found in these tunnels. Two rounded drums are driven deep into the stone floor. Traces of light swirl and dizzying patterns across the surfaces, nodding in and around each other in tight gyres. Those glowing threads are similar to the ones you've seen, the ones on the other statues you've seen, but much more complex. An, an audible hum permeates the air around the machine. Let's see, let's try more machinery. Manipulate the light patterns with your fingers to activate the machine. An Allegorn here. He actually has... Hmm, he doesn't have much though. I wonder if I can back out now. Oh, I can't. Cool. So I can use my flex skill to choose. Let's choose Lord Mystical. There we go. Yeah. I'm ready. Let's try this again. Lord Mystical. So let's go with the 85% here. You bring open palms down on the two drums simultaneously, and a gonging resonates through you. A burst of golden light erupts from the machine. For a fraction of a second, your mind is wiped clean. Stunned. But that was a good thing, right? Let's go. Last lingering dregs of energy have drained from the machine. Yes. Okay, well what did that do? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, yes. let's look to see if there are other machines. It looks like there's lines drawing. But it also looks like uh, yes. some of these passageways are like um, blocked off, maybe? I don't know. I'm ready. 
There's this thing here then. Warm sinews of light lace the walls, spiraling into the base of a hollow statue. It gleams the same color with as the glowing strands. Faint scratches along the base, about the size of a stitch's claw, suggest that they hit the statue while tunneling and could not extract it. Round tubes with apertures of varying size connect to a central drum. A soft breeze from the newly dug burrow behind you hums over the openings. A gnarled metallic the gnarled metallic veins running through the rocky walls deaden the noise from the device. It is unlikely to be ahead heard outside this room. Let's see. Strike the drum. Your stomach flips as a wave of vibrating air buffets you for a fraction of a second. Golden light flows up from the seams into the statue, forming a looping pattern at the center of the drum. Rumbling continues. Energy coruscates through the along the veins in the rock running into the device. After a moment, the sound gutters and dies away, but wispy tracings of the pattern continue to glow on the surface. It is approximately the size of a human hand, though the shape is more like a dozen tentacles. Place your hand on the light tracings. The same sound you heard before rattles your gut. It sputters but remains on, the acoustics having deteriorated over the millennia. Though the sound is intermittent, there's something fascinating about the way about it that forces you to pay attention. You easily tear your focus away, but the effect might be stronger if the statue were fully intact, especially on a creature with a non-human physiology. Allegern. <clears> hmm, <throat> psychic effect. The device is broken, and it likely wasn't built for humans, but if used on the right creatures, it might be it might keep them wrapped for a time. Now, okay, so this is just what we use to, uh, um, if the Steeja were here, this is probably what we would use to disrupt them, I guess. On it. Okay, so, I am not, oh, here we go, then. oh there are doors yes. we can open that I just wasn't looking at. Okay, I feel a little dumb now. I'm ready. Let's see. You got more of these devices. Oh shoot! Yes. Okay. Is there a way we can bypass this acid? Of course. No. Nope. Okay, so there's acid here. <clears throat> More devices. Okay, let's see. There's more doors. Fine. Yeah, this place was probably all right. Interesting with all the stitcha here. Right now, Fine. it's just kind of a. Uh, Hard to exactly figure out. I mean, it's possible that after walking through all this, uh, this is just where I yes. needed to go to begin with. Now. So let's check the next area. <coughs> oh, this looks more like what we're looking for: buried crossroads. That's a cool little light ladder too. Doing it now. Oh, what do we have here? Sleek and streamlined, this machine hums with energy. You're fairly certain that it came to life just as you entered the Doing chamber. It now. So does it come to life when anybody comes here or just cast offs? You poke idly around this old machine. It feels strangely and vaguely familiar, but memory's faint itch is fleeting. You have the barest fleeting image of you have the barest feeling of images and information flickering around you, but nothing concrete, nothing that lasts for more than a millisecond. You run your hands across the machine, trying to lift and interact it with other ways, but nothing seems to work. It's a mystery to you. The flickering and incomprehensible data reminds you of Calloused Edge. She'd likely know what to make of the device. Great. Fine. How about this machine? 
This device looks like it was once part of some larger device or a network of devices embedded in the rock beneath the city. Thick cables disappear into the holes in the wall. The machine gives off a low hum just at the edge of your hearing. I'm trying to figure out how it works. Touching the etched surface reveals a display interface, but it seems unresponsive to your gestures and commands. The display does show a vast network of other devices it must be connected to. If you're reading it correctly, there's a vast array of machines and engines operating somewhere beneath the city. This interface might control them. Try to use it. You poke at it, swipe at it, yell it, speak gently to it, but the interface is completely unresponsive to your commands. Okay. Now. Let's see. What else do we got? What is this? The sorrow looms from the skillfully created mural. You can almost feel its clammy, clammy tendrils wrapping around your heart. Its inhuman victims twist and writhe, pleading for an impossible mercy. And the changing god is weird guy if this is indeed his place. Some of the glowing bands on this machine have gone dark. It seems to be dying. Doing it now. Okay. Uh, what is the mirror here, then? I have an idea, but... A staggering array of mirrors and lenses encircle you. Cables run back, run from their backs to various machines scattered throughout the room. Your hands ache at the sight of the sanctuary, this workshop. Your predecessor spent many hours here and your body remembers. Behind the display you hear a hinge creak. Study the lenses and mirrors. Mirrors twitch as you gaze from surface to surface. Eventually you realize why. They are attuned to your mind. You can move each one as effortlessly as your own hand. Every surface shows you something else beside your reflection. A sliver of glass highlights a red cord around your throat. A small oval mirror lingers on a pulsing blue star beneath your forehead. The mirror to either side of the large central mirror periodically flash purple. The tiny lenses above it all crane their necks to study you. One of them appears to be shivering. You sense that the tiny lenses are moving with purpose and hold still. They can't carefully swivel to focus on your arms. You see something odd. The you in the audience of lenses is bigger, stronger. You feel a painful twinge in the crook of your arm, and one of the lenses goes cloudy gray. Hmm. Determine the purpose of the tiny lenses. You mentally draw the attention of the tiny lenses. Feeling the pull of their endless gaze on your skin, in their reflection you see an idealized version of yourself, stronger, smarter, faster, and in a flash you understand. They can change you, improve you, but a few of them are glowing growing cloudy under the strain. You should act quickly. Uh, direct them at your head. The constellation of tiny lenses align with your head, and you meet the gaze of your reflection. Something snaps in your mind, and suddenly you feel sharper, more alert. One by one, the lenses fade into an opaque haze until only one remains, as bright as a winter star. You permanently gain one intellect pool, and maximum intellect pool is now eight. Nice. Let's uh, reach for the shivering lens. You raise your hand, the tiny lens bends towards it, then flinches away with a swaft bong. But not before you catch a glimpse of something small and shapeless moving inside. Allegrin grunts, peering up at the reluctant sliver of glass. Can't say I like the look of that, but we'd better take a closer look all the same. Uh, get down here now. The lens recoils, then slowly, perhaps helplessly, turns to face you like a child who spotted a monster out of the corner of its eye. And inside the glass, tendrils of thick liquid stream from the corners of the lens, cooling, coiling thread by thread into a perfect vibrating sphere. And seeing it, it sees you and smashes itself against the glass, turning it utterly black. Looks alive, Allegrin says. Not that that means anything. Crack. A jagged white line appears in the upper corner of the lens, racing across the surface like a breaking wave. You blink. When you open your eyes an instant later, the lens is gone. All that remains is an empty frame. Well, that was anticlimactic. And yet, something has changed in your mind. You hear whispers too distant to understand. You feel a presence swelling within you, reveling in the alignment of your tides. You hear a, f a voice speak a single word, a word that echoes across the labyrinth, calling you to it. Ooh. I'll remember that. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, let's see. Let us. Uh, let's move the slivered mirror. Was it slivered or silvered? Slivered. Mentally, you jostle the mirror and feel an invisible noose close around your throat and tighten. Gasping, you sink to your knees. Fall to your side, and as your vision goes dark, you realize that if you survive this death, you found a shortcut into the labyrinth. How convenient. I can't, can't die. Please tell me I didn't just die again. didn't just got to the labyrinth can't say I expected you back so soon uh, okay why am I here again you died I mean not dead end not dead dead but you came awfully close you should be more careful out there for both of us how do I get back use the portal has anything changed since the last time I was here look around it's your mind Okay, well this seems like a good place to stop for now. We're going to go looking around in our mind um, and see what's changed. Well, that's definitely changed. Um, yeah. Yeah, I will say this is one of the more interesting aspects of the game is that you get to occasionally go tooling around your own mind. But um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'll see you soon. Take care.